Have you ever tried to download a SharePoint file using Power Apps? You know, like actually get it to show up in your downloads folder, not open another browser, not do the whole launch thing? Yeah, it doesn't work, right? The download function just ignores your command and basically doesn't launch. Well, I thought that was the case, but it turns out that Jeff, aka Scuba from my team, has figured out how to do it with a little URL manipulation. So he's going to join us this morning for a quick video to show you guys how you can change the URL so instead of those SharePoint files just launching, they will actually download. So we're going to jump over to him. We're going to let him explain what's going on with that. And then I'll come back at the end and kind of give you my breakdown of what he showed you. Sound fun? Then let's switch over to his desktop and take a look. Thanks for that intro, Shane. I'm sure it was great. Shane told me I didn't need to do an intro, uh, so I won't. But Shane and I go way back. I worked with Shane for a while now. He taught me how to build apps. He gave me the nickname Scuba. He's basically my best friend. I'm probably his best friend too. But anyways, let's get into what I want to show you. And that's how to download any file from Power Apps, directly from Power Apps. And this came up because I was working with one of our customers, Katie from PMI. I jumped on a quick help session and she was like, hey, the, the download function isn't working for me. And I was like, okay, let's take a look at it. Sure enough, it wasn't working. So I had to do some, some looking, some testing, and uh, after a little while of playing, I figured out a way to be able to download these files directly uh, from Power Apps, which is by altering the code of the URL a little bit. So let's jump in and take a look at that. So here is kind of the finished product. We have a launch button, a download button that doesn't work, boo, and then the download working button. Yeah. So <laughs> let's just uh, put it in play mode really quick. Let's hit the launch. Boom. All right, opens a new tab launches it, I can see the image. I try the download button, it does the same thing, All right? So that, that doesn't give me what I want. And then I click the download working button. Woo, yeah, there it is. Open it up, bring it over here, just so you know, I'm not lying, there it is. There is the file. So let's rework this now and see how this is done. I'll probably skip this download button right here, or one of those, because the one that's not working, what's the point of using it? So let's go over here. Let's add a new screen. So a blank screen. From our blank screen, I'm just going to insert a gallery. So a vertical gallery. And then we're going to re resize it, move it around, make it look a little better, right? I know that one screen wasn't the prettiest. You can make it prettier. So we're going to say image and title. And let's connect it, the data source, to my document library. Perfect. All right, in here is my title card. I'm gonna change this to file name with extension. Cool, I'm gonna move this over a little bit. Bring it up, pull my gallery, make it a little larger so I can fit some buttons in there. Also, I wanna really increase this thumbnail. Let's go here and we need to fix this. It's not image sample image. It's going to be this item dot thumbnail dot. Let's go with large. There we go. Cool. Now I want to add a few buttons. Let's add those now. So I'll go to insert tab and say a button, bring this over here. And this one can be launch. And then, you know what? I said I wasn't gonna do the broken download button. Oh, what's this error when I copy paste my button? You know what? Just go back up here, insert another button, I guess. There we go, that'll work. And download. This is gonna be the working download button. Well, you know what? Let's just build exactly what I had on the front screen. I know that's what Shane would want. Let's add another button. This one's gonna be download working. and pull it over here. There we go. We got launch, download, download working. To get the launch to work, right? Pretty straightforward up here in the on select. We're going to go with this item dot not file name. Link to item. I need to wrap that in launch. Function in the launch function. There we go. If I put this in play mode, 
this should launch my file. Great. The download is the same thing. This is the broken download button. I'll do it because, you know, why not? But it's not going to work. This item dot link to item. Let's try this. Yeah, boo, doesn't work, right? I knew that wasn't gonna work, but I still wanted to show it to you. Now we're gonna work on the button that actually works, why you've watched this video. And maybe you, you know, skipped my whole spiel to start and just are coming to watch this right now, which is perfectly fine. You know, it's fine, you're here now. So let's work on this button. Uh, one of the first things that I wanna do is go over to my document library. So in the data panel over here, I see my document library connected, click the three dots, click on edit data. So what we need is the, a portion of the URL. So we need the, that site up to here. So I'm not gonna grab my document library name yet. So I'm gonna copy this. Okay, head back over to Power Apps. And on this button, I am going to say download double quotes, paste in that portion of the URL. Now, there's a special, special code, the magic code that makes it all happen, right? This is what took me a while to figure out for the customer and it, it only works, I found this way. So let me grab that code from my text editor. Ma makes the magic, makes the magic happen code. I don't know why I, said, I, don't know why I said that, but there we go. We're gonna grab this code, we'll also put it in the link of the video so you have that. We're gonna grab that. It is gonna go right here. There we go. And now here, so I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this. So there's one way that requires a little bit more hard coding of the document library name, and then there's one way that's more dynamic. I wanna show you both because um, when I first figured this out, I started with the hard coding approach, and then I was like, oh, I can do it an easier way. So I'm just gonna type in the document library name. No slash, add a space, go ambersand, this item dot file name with extension. Close that, put it in play mode. Yeah, works. Yes, I was pretty proud when I figured that one out. So that works, great. All right, but let's look at a different way of doing it. So this way works, we're gonna code this out. I'm going to just retype it. So let's go download in my double quotes. I'm gonna grab this portion of the OR plus the magic that makes it happen up to the equal sign. Copy that, place it in here. And then we're gonna go with ambersand, this item dot full path. Close that, minimize that, put it in play mode, and it works again, right? A little bit easier than having to, to type in the document library name, and it works. Again, I was pretty pumped for this. I showed the whole team. I was like, yeah, look at this. And they were like, nice, do a video on it. And this is the video on it. So I hope you found this helpful. I, I, mean, I think it will be helpful in a lot of instances. So. That's all I got, Shane. I'm gonna kick it back to you. Before I go though, maybe you'll see me a little bit more in the future. Maybe I'll create a few other videos when Shane doesn't have time or just throw some extra videos up on his channel, similar to this, quick little helpful videos. Yeah, let us know in the comments if you'd like that. And now back to you, Shane. All right, thanks, Scuba. I didn't know we were best friends. I guess I should tell my mom that she's not my only friend anymore and now it's you, woohoo! Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. As you're looking at, like, just remember, it's a good reminder, right, that SharePoint, you know, has all those different URLs. Like, we talk about the SharePoint API all the time, but there's a lot of stuff you can do by just manipulating the SharePoint URLs, even right there in Power Apps. Uh, also, you know, when it comes to this type of stuff, so this is the type of things that Jeff figured out for one of his customers. Um, he is also one of the lead mentors over at the Power Platform University, right, our six-month training program. So if you would like more information on that, go to training.powerapps911.com. You can join us. We're always enrolling new students, always having a good time with all of our live classes, our mentors, our on-demand stuff, our hands-on projects, our exams. Oh, the university is a big old program. All right. But other than that, I'm going to say thanks 
and have a great day.